Well, coming up this April, we will have lived in our house for eight years. And I've told this story before of this property being my dream house. And when I was growing up, uh, we lived a couple miles away from my grandparents' house. So my parents' house, their farm, and my grandparents' farm. And so we would go there often daily in the summer. And in between <laughs> my parents' farm and my grandparents' farm was this property, this little white house with two red barns. It always seemed like time stood still here. It was always kept really neat and tidy. And honestly, if you would have asked me if, say, Dawn, you could live anywhere, where would you wanna live? I would have picked this farm. I never in a million years would have thought it would be a reality. And so seven years ago when the opportunity arise, it, it really felt like a dream come true. But I'll never forget when I was talking to the gal on the phone about it, she knew that we had four kids and uh, she said, well, just so you know, the house is really small. I actually saw a small house as a benefit. I was fully confident that we could keep all of our stuff simplified enough to make this space work. And I had grown up in a small house and in many ways I thought it was great. It, for better or worse, uh, we we were always close as a family because of growing up in a small house. And I thought that would be kind of cool for our family too. So we moved in and really we were able to make the spaces work. We did, you know, we've done some remodeling over the years. This room started out as our master <laughs> bedroom. It was pretty tight. Um, right away we had to remodel this bathroom. And so this room originally had a closet, but we took the closet out and gave that space. It was it was right here. We gave it to the bathroom on the other side, which worked out awesome and it, it's made that bathroom function really well. And then we had an Ikea wardrobe. So we brought the Ikea wardrobe in, our bed, and that's all that fit in here, right? And so then a few years later, we swapped and, and Tom and I's room is now um, in that room, what used to be the family room. This is kind of get used as a family room now, but also some storage. And it just kind of stayed this way. So we had the wardrobe, a bed in here, and it was, it worked okay. And I've just always needed a little more kitchen storage, whether it's the holidays and there's extra baking materials or when I get on a sourdough bread kick. And then, you know, it's cheaper to buy the bread flour like in bulk. And so then I bought all this bread flour. Where do, where do those types of things go? And so for multiple years, I tried to make this space work with the storage we had in here. I am always going back and forth. Do we just need to declutter more or do we need to add in more organization <laughs> or more storage <laughs> furniture? And I hate storage <laughs> furniture. So my go-to is always just reduce the inventory more, right? Uh, but after a few years, I finally gave in and I'm like, no, I think we just need a little more storage in here. Did I bring this in here by myself? Yes, you did. I'm pretty sure. How would I have done that? <laughs> I don't know. A little harder to move out by yourself? Are you a little smarter now than five years ago? Well, when you... it's either I'm either smarter now or I'm weaker now. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> and so I believed after thinking on this for a long time <laughs> that it would provide just enough extra storage that we wouldn't have p little piles of stuff sitting on the floor at the end of the bed in here. That was my main goal. So I wanna go through the process with you today of uh, getting it assembled and in place and then organizing it, showing you what I am prioritizing to keep in there. So Tom has the old one moved out and we're gonna put that out in our office building and he's working on assembling the new one. Also, I can link to, uh, we have a video with our full property tour if you wanna see all the buildings and hear a little bit more of this story. And then also, uh, if wondering about foster care, this did start out as a foster care room and that's why we switched bedrooms. I gave a full update on that in a video I did just before Christmas, so I won't, I won't go into all those details details, but I can link to that as well. So again, real quick, let's revisit this idea. How do we know when we just need to declutter more, reduce the inventory more? And how do we know when we do need a little extra storage or organization? And so for me, I always want to fully exhaust lowering the inventory because I know that because we keep the inventory so low in our house, everything is easier and functions better. Keeping the kitchen clean is easier, laundry is easier, keeping every room tidy. You know, my goal early on was that every room in our house could be picked up or pulled together in five minutes or less. And the only way that we can achieve that and maintain it is by having very low inventory. And you realize as you significantly reduce your inventory that you don't miss any of this stuff, that you don't miss it. You're like, wow, I was giving so many hours of my week to managing and organizing and looking for things. And I don't miss any of this stuff because we're creatures of habit and we use the same 10 to 20% 
all of the time. It is easier for our brain to use something, to wear something that we already know fits and is comfortable or we already know how to use. And so it takes more work for our brain to try something new, to learn something new. You, you've had that experience when you buy like a new kitchen appliance and then it sits in the box because well, it actually takes work to learn how to set it up and to learn how to use it. And so it is easier for us to just use the things we know how to use and to use the same things over and over again than to bring in new stuff or to develop new habits or new hobbies and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not using all of this stuff in storage that you thought you were gonna use, that you acquired thinking, I was gonna start doing this or that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. And I think there is so much wisdom in letting that extra stuff go, freeing up this extra bandwidth, freeing up the extra space in your house, and then really getting to feel like you can focus on what's important and how you actually want to spend your time. So all that to say, I am always gonna err on the side of reducing inventory. But like I said, I have have been collecting data for the last few years. I let seasons come and go. I try, I mean, I make a pass through our kitchen, uh, I don't know, every two months, like with our mentorship group, we are constantly going through that space. And so I felt pretty convinced that, no, I had reduced the inventory as much as I could. The stuff we had and would sometimes accumulate in here was stuff that we were using. And so it was time to consider adding just a little bit more storage in here. Okay, and real quick, if you have been thinking about upgrading the mattresses in your home, now is the perfect time to do so. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep and they have their President's Day sale going on right now. So that means you can save 25% off of your Helix mattress and get a free bedroom bundle. But it's just for a limited time and you can use the link down below to check out the details. But Tom and I have had our Helix mattress for over two and a half years now, we love it. So Helix Sleep are premium mattresses customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door with free shipping here in the US. So you go online and you take the Helix Sleep Quiz and they match you with your perfect mattress based on your body type and your sleep preferences. So one of the first questions it's gonna ask is, what position do you normally sleep in? So for Tom and I, we are side and stomach sleepers. It's also gonna ask like, what firmness do you generally prefer? And we like to have our mattresses air a little bit more on the more firm side. And also, do you ever wake up with back pain? And so you take the quiz and then they match you. So for Tom and I, we were matched with the Helix Dusk Lux. And again, like I said, it's been over two and a half years and we love it so much. We get such a great night's sleep and you know how important sleep is. We simply cannot be at our best. We can't make good decisions about do we add more organization or not, about decluttering. We don't trust ourselves if we're not getting a good night's sleep. And unlike other brands, Helix mattresses do not contain fiberglass, which can be harmful for your health. Other mattress companies use fiberglass as a flame retardant in their products, but Helix mattresses are free of harmful fiberglass materials. And of course, if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, Helix offers a 100 night sleep trial. So you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. Plus Helix mattresses have a 10 year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So a great night's sleep is never far away. And I'm guessing you've been thinking about upgrading your mattress. So now really is the perfect time during their President's Day sale where you can get 25% off your purchase plus a free bedroom bundle, but it's just for a limited time. So check out the details down below. You can click on the link down there or go to helixsleep.com backslash minimal mom. Okay. So now I think we can get back to work. So when Tom went to stand up the units, two things. <laughs> One, we realized that uh, the ceiling fan <laughs> was probably going to hit it when the doors are open. So um, luckily the, the ceiling fan's not attached to the switch. You have to pull the chain um, to turn it on. So there's a little intentionality required behind it. So we're just gonna have to be aware of that. But then also the original wardrobe in here we had on the bedroom that shares with our other bedroom now. Um, we had it on that wall because when we did have our bed in here, it was like really the most logical arrangement. But as I was looking at it, as Tom was working to put this together, I was like, would it fit if we rotated it and had it on the, the exterior wall, especially because this one is um, three inches deeper and we didn't want to make it tight walking into the room. And so, so we were able to rotate it that way and it makes the room feel so much bigger and more open. And so that was, that was good too, because my other fear with adding this in here is this is not a big room. It's 10 feet by 10 feet, I think 10 by 11. It looks, it always looks bigger on camera. Uh, it is not a big room. So I'm like, well, great. 
we're gonna put this monster wardrobe in here and it's gonna close in the room and I'm gonna regret it and then I'm gonna be annoyed with myself and everything. Um, but when we were able to put it against that exterior wall, it actually felt really good in here. And it's white, so I know everybody doesn't love white because it, it shows everything and gets dirty, but if you do have tight spaces, white really just keeps it open and bright and doesn't feel like it's closing in on you. So I was glad for that. This is just from Ikea. I can I can definitely link to it as well. So we were able to get it all put together. Tom got the doors on, it stood up in place. And now, now we can work together to put stuff back in in a very intentional manner. I think you've probably experienced this too when you're like, okay, I have this clean slate in front of me. I want to be very intentional with the stuff that goes in there. So why don't we work together Together to put everything back in. So oh, one of the main things, <laughs> one sleep up. Okay, one of the main sleep things that I wanted to be able to fit in here were a couple of our kitchen appliances that only get used occasionally. So we have our large instant pot, and then I also wanted to put the bread maker. And I was really, really hoping <laughs> that they would both fit on this lower shelf. And they actually do. So that is awesome. And then on here, um, I wanted to be able to put our casserole style uh, crock pot. And so this had been sitting in here um, as well. And so this can fit right there, which is awesome. So another category of things then that I really wanted to fit in here was paper products. So we would always have packages of paper napkins, uh, paper plates, we'll use paper plates when we entertain, and like the box of black trash bags. Like I don't use those in the kitchen, but I use them when I'm decluttering, right? So these get to go on this shelf. So as I was putting stuff in here, I, I just want to prioritize, or I wanna do it like favorites first approach. Like put the things that we use the most, that we need access to, put those things in first. Paper plates. Oh, there's another thing, a napkins. Black trash bags can go there as well. So we got that in there. Um, another thing that was previously in this cabinet were extra like supplements, this kind of stuff. This is a great opportunity to go back through, pare it down to what fits comfortably in here. And we do access it um, fairly frequently. So I wanted it to have kind of a, a easy to get to spot as well. Okay, so these bins, I'm, I'm not gonna be tall enough now. <laughs> These bins are for batteries, extra like random phone accessories, like screen protectors. And so I have four of these. I'll show you the other two too, but these two are probably the ones that get used the most. And so I'm gonna put these ones here. I love like having this one for batteries. We just know whether it's extra batteries, uh, just double A AA and triple A that you use all the time, watch batteries, the, the batteries for the smoke detectors or the ones in the dog dog's collars for their invisible fence or like kind of a weird size. Like we just know if you are looking for batteries in our house, they are right here. And so I love that idea from Marie Kondo. She talks about like consolidating and having one place for everything. Like it's it's all here and so these baskets have provided homes for some of that tech random stuff that floats around we have this one for extra like camera stuff for our video cameras and and whatnot and then this one it said microphone I, it, well it's supposed to say microphone stuff um just like little extra microphone things and i don't know where the label went how in this process of doing this did we lose it i'm sure it'll turn up if not i have more but that's what this one is for. So we're gonna put this one right here. Okay, so I don't keep a lot of extra linens. We have an extra queen set of sheets and an extra twin, just if we would need them. But mostly for everyone's linens, like if they if it needs to be laundered, we just wash it the same day and put it back on, all in the same day. So I don't feel like we need an extra set. I do keep some extra pillowcases on hand. That was, that's generally the thing that it seems like we need the most. And then I have an extra flat sheet in here that we use for a, a drop cloth when we're painting. But otherwise, like I just don't keep a lot of extra linens and it fits so nicely here. I just need to, um, I'll grab a, a chalk label for it. And then up here, Tom loves to, um, he wears the same tennis shoes always, but he likes to get extras and have different variations in color. So these have been under our bed in our room. I don't, I really try to keep under our bed clear. So they're gonna live in here now, which feels much better. So why don't we move to this section now? 
Okay, so let me tell you uh, my game plan for this side of the closet. So uh, obviously this is where our, our hanging clothes are gonna go. That worked fine in our old wardrobe. Uh, I'm gonna maybe see if I can get Tom to pare his clothes down just a touch, not too many things. And then also my clothes were all on wood hangers, but not all of Tom's were, so I wanted to swap out the plastic hangers for these. I've tried to love the velvet hangers and I just don't. I don't like, like especially for my sweaters, how things stick to it. So I grabbed some more wood hangers from Ikea. So we're gonna swap out some of his hangers as we put everything back up. But that's pretty straightforward. What I wanna do on top is have space for extra blanket storage. That was also what was lacking. In the winter, um, we have a couple extra like uh, heated blankets, which are the best ever. <laughs> and then I can keep our house really cold if we have those. But in the summer, they don't have anywhere that they've lived. And I don't love putting them in our basement because it gets wet down there occasionally. And then I also really like that there's these built-in drawers. So I use the dresser in here, which is fine. I really hate dressers for clothing storage. Like how stuff gets stacked up, you can't easily see what's in there. I really like these baskets. So I'm just gonna keep my dress clothes in here. Um, I have, well, I only have one sweater I'm gonna put in there right now that I don't want to hang on a hanger. And then also my jeans. So I'm gonna keep my nice clothes if I'm getting dressed to visit with you or to go someplace, this is where all my clothes would be. And then I'll just keep the dresser for my more casual stuff and athletic stuff and, and whatnot. Okay, this feels really good. And like I said, it's a great opportunity to go through everything. I have a few shirts of Tom's that I'm gonna ask him about and see if we really want to put those back in or if not. So we'll just see. I like how this feels <laughs> with how it is, but we can fit more in if we need to. Um, so let's talk about the top. So uh, like I said, we wanted some blanket storage. So I was trying to find containers that would fit up there. Cause again, I'm short. So it's nice to be able to just like grab something and pull it down that would utilize the space well, but also be kind of visually appealing. So I saw these at Target and I think they'll work well um, for blankets. Let me grab my stool and we'll put these up. And I did actually before I bought these cause they were not uh, super inexpensive. I actually put a Rubbermaid tote up there to see if that would just fit up there, but it, it's just a little bit too deep. We couldn't close the doors all the way. So that would have been my first choice cause it would have been cheaper. But um, I believe we'll have these for a very long time and hopefully they'll hold up well because we won't be going into in and out of them very often. So I guess we'll just test it out and see how it works. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I wanna store in there for now, and then we're just gonna test it out. If I need to make adjustments, I can. Oh, I have to get the chalk labels too, so we'll do that. I also didn't realize, so like I said, this whole set, it came as like one set, even though it's multiple pieces. Um, it's just from Ikea. I didn't realize that it didn't come with any kind of pulls or handles. So right now I have to like grab at the bottom <laughs> to open it. So um, I got these from Amazon. So they're nice and long. I wanted them to feel like proportionate with it. I also, I wanna go away from the black in our house. I actually got new hardware for our kitchen cabinets too <laughs> that are gold, the, like the brushed gold, like the satin gold. So I kinda wanted them to blend in, not stand out too much. So I think they're really pretty. So I'm gonna see if Tom will put these in for us quick too so we can see how that looks. But in the meantime, I do wanna answer questions that you all asked through Instagram. So let's visit for a few minutes and we'll have him put these on. Okay, this is such a good one. I feel guilty and wasteful not storing things and getting rid of everything as each child outgrows or loses interest. How do I get rid of toys and clothes when I have younger children who will grow into them? None of us wanna be wasteful and we've most of us been raised to believe that it's being a good steward and it's being financially responsible if we try and keep as much as possible to pass from one child to the next. But what I've realized um, now having four kids that we've handed things down from is that they need a very little passed on from one to the next. It's amazing how even if the seasons are different when they're a different size, they just have different tastes. When they were real, real little, I could pass things on and it didn't really matter. But as they get older, they have their own tastes. Pass on very little. The true favorites. If one child didn't wear it, don't keep it thinking, well, maybe the next one will. So put a limit around it. For me, that was one tote. So even now I keep one tote for the boys to hand down to each other or if we get hand-me-downs, which I'm so grateful for, one tote. We can't manage it all. And when we try to keep too much, we forget we have it and they outgrow it before they wear it. Along those same lines, I have this question that says, do you keep things for when you have grandchildren? No, I mean, already I haven't, no. So we have three bins of toys. If little kids would come over to our house, 
Duplos, blocks, and then a mixed bin that has some like dress up clothes, baby doll stuff, trucks, and tractors. So we keep those three bins of toys um, to have for company. And then, other than that, I don't anticipate keeping any other toys for grandkids to come over. I think when that time comes, that if this isn't enough, we could I could always get something specific to them. And it's just inventory that I don't want to have to manage. Not sure if I'm done having kids, what to do with all of the baby stuff. So again, this is where I would say keep the true favorites. So maybe you have a baby carrier or swaddles, um, a bouncy seat. I mean, when you actually look at the pieces that stand the test of time that you love, that you consistently use, it's not actually that many. So keep the true favorites and then understand that baby stuff is the easiest stuff on the planet to come by. I love this one. It says, no question. It just wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And then she goes on to say, my 10 year old boy, I can't keep my room clean. Will you help me pick some stuff to give away? And then her six year old gave me his one extra blanket to give to someone who needs it now. And then her four year old, mom, I'm done with my playhouse. Maybe baby Maddie needs it now. This gave me goosebumps when I read it because I know often we think of kids as being so attached to their things and um, having a hard time getting rid of stuff. But honestly, our kids, I believe they're minimalists at heart. I believe they're generous, they're kind, they're giving. Kids are not good at managing inventory. And yes, do we have some that are more attached than others? Absolutely. So we use tactics to help them but we just continue to model this and I think have the expectation that our kids want to be giving and they want to help others. We just have to give them the opportunity for that and explain to them how that works. So this was just so encouraging, so I wanted to share it with you. Yeah, this is such a good question from Christy too. Can only declutter in small chunks of time, feels chaotic, how to make it more manageable. I say this all the time, but five minutes matters. And uh, it looks like you have small kids based on your profile picture. And I remember that time I fully decluttered our house when our kids were ages, our four kids were ages four and under. I worked in all the little random pockets of time. And I also would sometimes just plop them in front of the TV and put a show on so I could go get a little extra work done. And so I did, I never had a full weekend or a full Saturday. It was never like that. And we think in our head, we look around and we're like, there is so much to do. I need big chunks of time. But the downfall of that is that we get overwhelmed very easily. Decision fatigue is real. And so we might say, okay, I got a sitter and I have four hours and I'm gonna tackle this space. And we get like a half hour in and we're like, oh my goodness, I am overwhelmed. Even just this week, uh, we did a, in our mentorship group, we did a work session together in a storage space and I was working down in our basement. And I I was about 30 minutes in and I I like hit the wall. I felt overwhelmed. I had made some good progress, but then I just like saw this whole other pile of randomness and I was just like, wow, I just feel tired. And it's actually good to stop when we feel that way because we wanna keep decluttering positive and a good experience. Um, and if we try to push through and we're feeling really tired and off and like, then we, we second guess our decisions. We don't, we're not as ruthless with this stuff. And so I knew I was just like, I need to be done right now. But what's fascinating, I came back down like a half hour later because I needed to get something from the basement. And then I was like, ooh, you know, maybe I'll just do a few more minutes. And so we want to keep it positive. These short chunks of time are really powerful and it's how you're going to maintain your house moving forward. So, I mean, it, I mean, we're only now getting into a season of life where we have big chunks of time again. And so it's the little chunks of time that you can declutter your house in and then it's also how you're going to maintain it too. So I know it's not glamorous to say five minutes matters. But I believe if you will use those short bursts where you're focused and you can get a lot of done in a short amount of time and you're gonna create momentum and you're gonna feel really good about it. Oh, this is a bummer. I decluttered a stuffed animal of my son's and he was very upset. How do you handle that situation? It happens, right? So first, understand that you probably did not traumatize your son. I've talked to child uh, therapists about this because the fear is that we are gonna traumatize our children. And she had said, like literally, unless you are taking it, ripping out of their hand and burning it in the front lawn, that you're probably not, you're not creating a traumatic experience. Again, we're talking for kids that have had a fairly steady, stable upbringing, uh, childhood so far. Obviously, like when we were learning about foster care or if you've adopted kids or different, if they just have a different background, then that's much different. So I'm talking about neurotypical, uh, you know, pretty steady uh, childhood so far. Um, 
you haven't traumatized him. Can it be sad? Sure. And so what do, what, what have I done in the past when that's happened? I own up to it. I humble myself. I say, I'm sorry. And I also remind them why I'm doing this. And I say, you know, I've noticed as I've, you know, simplified my bedroom and some of these other spaces, it just feels better. I feel happier in those spaces. It's easier to keep clean. And so I really want that for you too. So I'm very sorry that I made a mistake in this area. How can I make it up to you? And I'll often then suggest like, do you want to go for a walk together? Do you want to play a game or put together a puzzle? Um, what something that we can do together, not, I'm going to go out and buy you another stuffed animal, right? Our kids are drowning in stuff and they are the loneliest they have ever been. And so they are desperate for human connection. And even sometimes, um, what I've heard from therapists too, is that them recognizing something is missing. It's not even necessarily that they were super attached to that item, which they make it feel that way, right? It's irreplaceable. It's my sp most special stuffed animal ever and you got rid of it, right? It isn't even usually that. It's just they feel like they've lost a sense of control in it um, with their things and they're acknowledging it and they just don't always know how to navigate it. And so I always wanna say, what can I do to make it right? But point it back to a way that we can connect and have time together, not I'm gonna replace that thing. Because we know human connections and relationships are the most important thing, not the physical stuff. Also, just a friendly reminder that in the book, Simplicity Parenting by Kim John Payne, uh, he does say that it is okay to declutter our kids' stuff. Now, what he recommends is that we're boxing it up and setting it aside, but they don't necessarily have the skills at young ages to know what to keep and how much and what to let go. And so we need to help them through that process and help them develop a, a desire for a clean and tidy and simplified space. And often they can only understand what that feels like by experiencing it. So we go in, we box up stuff that they've outgrown, they're clearly not using or have forgotten about. We set it aside, let them test this out. If they ask for something, we give it back. Um, but otherwise then after a few months, we feel pretty confident letting that other stuff go. I realize we've been talking a lot about toys. We can switch gears now to more adult stuff. I'm new here, when it comes to clothes and shoes, how do you decide what and how much to keep? I've always said like, I don't like capsule wardrobes. I've always seen capsule, capsule wardrobes as synonymous with cardigans, layering, mixing and matching and I don't love that I it's just never been me I hate cardigans I don't like layering like this I'll layer but not like open front stuff I don't like adjusting it or feeling like I have to make sure it's laying right anyways that's my own thing and so I just created um, well, first I created a uniform. So like when we were selling real estate, I would just have a blouse and a nice pair of jeans and I knew they fit. I felt good and I could grab it and go if like a showing came up. And then from there, when I wasn't doing so much professionally, it just became a black top and jeans, which worked great for the busy season of life we were in with the kids. And then now as uh, I have a little more bandwidth that I can put towards clothing, I've introduced a little more color and pattern, which has been fun, um, but still I know myself and I have to keep it highly simplified. And so really as what I've realized is what I've kind of ended up, ended up doing is Project 333 by Courtney Carver. And this is where you have 33 items for three months. And that includes your tops, bottoms, shoes, accessories. And from the outside, people will be like, no, that's way too few. Oh my goodness, how could I only have 33? But if you would be willing to try it out, um, it is awesome. Like we've gone through this in our mentorship group. So many women are like, I was skeptical. I didn't think that could possibly work. I wear multiple hats. I, I have to dress up for work. I'm a nurse at night. I do yoga and I'm trying to think of all the different things like that could possibly do. Like I have all these different wardrobes I need and it still works with Project 333. So I just keep things highly simplified and pared down, but if you actually want some rules and guidelines around it, check out Project 333. I'll link to it. I did an interview with Courtney too, where we kind of went through like all the pushback of it. It was really fascinating. Um, so I'll link to that as well, but realizing that you need much, much less than what you've been, uh, than what you've been maintaining. How do you reconcile with all the money you see that you've wasted? So many of us has been raised, I mean, I, I had a fairly modest upbringing on a farm. All of our needs were always met, but man, my parents worked their butts off to make ends meet. And so I'm so grateful for them. My childhood was awesome. I'm so grateful for everything about it. And I know it's made me who I am today, right? But when you grow up um, very frugally and without tons of extra, 
you, you, it is just hardwired in you that you do not waste things and that money is the commodity that you are most worried about wasting. And what's fascinating now is there's just, there's just more in our, in our world now. Like most people have a little bit more extra discretionary spending. We can buy a little bit more. It's easier to get things. And so it's interesting that what I've observed the shift now is that actually the commodity most of us need to worry about wasting is time, not money. Now, I'm not saying we have tons of extra money just laying around and we can just like be wasteful with how we say it, how we spend it. I'm saying we have to recognize that all of this stuff that we have acquired actually takes a fair amount of energy and time to manage. A recent study said that the average uh, woman in America spends two hours and 40 minutes a day keeping house, taking care of our stuff, looking for things, cooking, doing laundry, all those things, two hours and 40 minutes. And our kids help too, but for myself, around 30 minutes a day. So we have to recognize that managing all of this stuff takes time and energy. And so for me now, the commodity I'm more worried about wasting is my time. And so that's meant I've had to get rid of tons of stuff that I spent money on, which was horrifying to me. That's like the worst thing possible, right? But I've had to realize that that stuff is not adding value. Keeping it does not put the money back in my pocket. And it is just sucking away all of my extra time and energy. So it is a huge mindset shift. But again, like I mentioned earlier, that's where doing five, 10, 15 minute chunks is so preferable in this situation because you're being confronted with all the wrong buying decisions you made as you're decluttering and that gets stressful and overwhelming. We feel guilty and shameful. And so we can only do that for so long. <laughs> you know, then we just need to stop. Okay, done for this session. Get the donations out, go about my day and then come back to it again. But just know the benefits are so good. I have a hard time articulating how good they are. You could not pay me uh, like money to take all of that stuff back because the benefits are so good. And I feel so much better about myself now that our home is highly simplified. I look for questions quite often on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you, you're welcome to do so. You don't have to, that's fine. Let me show you these new multi-purpose bins because I've showed a few different areas I've organized in our house and my office and the camper. I've used these uh, multi-purpose bins from the container store. I love them, but they're a little bit spendy. So let me show you the, the alternatives. We also need to get a piece of trim here, but that will, that will happen. Okay, so like I said, let's see. This is the bin from the container store. Um, I've used it under my computer in that cabinet. Um, I've used it in my office and our camper. This is great. Uh, Cass actually introduced this to me and it works really well in pantries. If you have a side-by-side -side fridge, it works really well in the freezer side. We know how annoying that is. And then uh, someone said, hey, they sell it at Walmart. So uh, I couldn't find it at our small Walmart. I had to go to a bigger one, but they did have this there. It kind of steps in on the bottom. I don't like, I really like how square this is. Everything stands up nice and straight in it. Um, but it's, it's pretty close to it. Um, really like the same size footprint. This one's a touch deeper, but it's really pretty close. And then also I saw at Walmart, I think these are really nice too. And I know the container store has something kind of similar, but for pantry shelves, for keeping them organized, for seeing what you have, I think these are great bins too. And again, I think this one was $3.78 and this one was under $5 too. Very affordable. Um, I, I would prefer for it to be perfectly square, honestly, but I could get over it again for the price. So anyways, these are some of my favorite organizing containers. So I want to show you um, that there's multiple options out there now, but I really think that these are a really nice versatile bin and they work for lots of places. And especially if you have kind of a taller cabinet space, these really seem to take advantage of that. So that is my uh, public service <laughs> announcement for today. Okay, I'm gonna grab Tom, see if we can get these handles on and then uh, and then we'll be done for today. Okay, I'm gonna show Tom the poles for in here and get his honest opinion. Hold on, before you do that, I wanna make predictions like uh, Johnny Carson. Okay. <laughs> Gold. Yep. Square. Okay. How big? Enormous. <laughs> yep, you, they're gold and they're square. What do you think? Will I look good? think these would not be my choice. Ooh, they're heavy. Um, good quality. Good quality. <laughs> um, I don't care. Okay, well, let's put them up then. Well, overall, I am thrilled with how this space turned out. I was a little worried that I was going to 
spend money on this. I mean, they don't give this stuff away, right? We were gonna get it in here. It was gonna feel too big. I was gonna realize that I didn't actually need the extra storage or whatnot, but I'm really happy. Uh, I really love that we were able to rotate it and put it on the exterior wall and just how well it's functioning. We've had it in here for a couple weeks now and I just, love 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 how it functions i love how this room feels and it really has solved the problem that we were having in here so just take your time collect the data and then it, you can make a wise decision too if you need to declutter more or add in a little bit of extra storage and organization okay well i have another video too where i went around our house and added in some new organizational things and so i will link to that if if you want to learn more about that as well as our playlist of long format videos that are great um, if you want a little longer video to declutter to all right well i love you i hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.